So this past weekend, I ended up going to Night Tales, a little sort of, you know, nightclub here in London in the middle of like Hackney Central underneath some arches that I hadn't been to in a while, but I'm meaning to check it out. They've got, I think, two venues. They've got Night Tales. They've got Night Tales Loft. The actual Night Tales itself has like three or four rooms. It's got like a nice little outside courtyard type of place. But again, I would never been there before. So this was a perfect opportunity to go because Origins, who put on some really, really good nights, were having Roy Perez and Partook playing. Roy Perez being the legendary DJ who essentially is a Bergheim resident, plays a lot in Panorama Bar, and somebody I kind of discovered having played in Color Factory a few years ago. I saw Roy Perez play back-to-back -back with Dr. Rubenstein, and it was legitimately one of the best um, sets I've heard in a while. And this was back when, you know, uh, the Colour Factory was called Mixed Garage. I think it's kind of under new ownership now. But once it was called Mixed Garage, I kind of went over there and I had an absolute blast. I really enjoyed it. So ever since then, I've kind of always kept my eye on Roy Perez. And whenever he plays in London, I try and check him out. I've also seen him play in Berlin a few, you know, once before. So, you know, I'm generally a fan of his. And I hadn't heard Partop play, but on this set, they decided to do an impromptu back-to-back -back, which was pretty decent because i think they were meant to play like three to four hours each but instead they ended up going back-to-back -back, which is you know decent for the fans as well because then you get a little bit more of an electrified set that you can kind of get to enjoy but the night was kind of ruined before i even began because i pulled up there right and i have this issue quite often because I'm a pretty big black dude, unfortunately, right? I do my best to try and get myself under a certain weight limit. I'm currently on my Alton Mason Hot Boy Summer, you know, fitness plan where I'm trying to lose as much fat as possible so I can fit into all my nice designer clothes. But usually, you know, more time than not, I'm kind of looking a little bit chunky and a little bit wide. So because of that, when I end up going out and end up wearing what I usually wear, which is always black clothing, it's a black bomber jacket, it's black skinny jeans, it's black Dr. Martin boots, it's a beanie hat, right? Usually when I have that sort of outfit on and I look the way that I do um, physically, for some reason, people always mistaken me for flipping security. And it legitimately is one of the most biggest bummers ever that you're ever going to have when you're going out. It really takes you out of the mood. And today, well, that weekend when I went, I had a, having a great time on the way there, listening to some music, have had a couple of drinks on a bus, feeling good. And then as I'm kind of pulling up to the flipping venue, um, you know, as I'm walking in, sorry, just before I even paid to go into the flipping venue, which is absolutely annoying. Some random girl was like, oh, can, no, or some guy was like, oh, can my friend come in? My friend's outside. Can I go get my friend or something? I was like, what? Go get a friend. And I realized, oh, they thought I was fucking security. And you know usually i'm not that kind of guy that cares about that sort of stuff but i had it kind of just pissed me off and so i had to reply i ended up kind of replying saying hey i know we all look alike but i'm not security go and talk to the guys over there and kind of walked off in a bit of a huff being a bit upset and angry and then unfortunately it happened again when i came back outside again because the cloakroom is at the front i didn't notice the cloakroom when i went in so i had to come back out again to go to the cloakroom and then when i came back out again another girl was like and some another person the girl was like oh excuse me do you know this i, was like, I don't work here so ugh. honestly man it's really the scrooge of being who i am and looking the way that i do unless i am a particular size then suddenly no one kind of thinks i look at security because even though i might be six foot and stuff if you're under a certain kind of you know pounds kg or whatnot suddenly you don't look that intimidating you don't look that you could be somebody that's going to wrestle somebody on the floor for not paying the correct amount of fee to come in um but in my head i thought i was you know safe because i had a pretty you know cool looking rick owens jacket on i thought i had some pretty cool jeans on i had some pretty cool boots on and i thought i was doing it i thought i was freaking it i thought i was lit and then i go to this club i pull up there and everybody mistakes me as flipping security that really really took a lot of the you know a lot of the air out of my balloon unfortunately <laughs> so i ended up having doing that but um, i walked into the venue the venue's pretty decent for what it is it's got a nice little courtyard area that you can kind of sit down in and chill out and have a little bit of an unwind time get some fresh air have a little bit of a cig there's a room on either end and they're kind of underneath arches two rooms there was one room where they're playing what it felt like to be more uh, i don't know what would you say 
um, more like general house music I think for the most part um, in the second room and of course in the main room you had Roy Perez and Partook absolutely slaying it and smashing it the only criticism I have of that place is number one they have those things in the toilets those toilet attendees where they have those guys that's trying to sell you perfume and chewing gum I don't know what it is about that sort of stuff but it bums me out number one because they're usually always black dudes and then number two it just kind of ruins my vibe it kind of just feels a little bit too central london-ish to have that sort of stuff you know in the middle of hackney central i flip and flip and hate that so that's one i'm not really too fond of when that kind of stuff happens and then because night tales is underneath these arches which is under a bridge it's a bit cold not gonna lie it's kind of like chilly it's not the most warmest um club i've been to but one thing i did like about it was the light show there's really cool little leds all over the top of the of the flipping room that kind of light up i guess in tune with the beats that are playing on the flipping cdjs which is pretty cool but i didn't really feel that much warmth in the room overall it just felt a little bit weird and the only warmth you have feel or what i did feel was when you get to the front of the flipping room where the djs are playing which again i feel like is a weird dynamic i think for usual in, in my opinion anyway i i think the best spaces where djs play are the ones where you don't need to be at the front you can be at the front if you want to go see them what they're doing but you don't actually need to be right at the front to kind of enjoy it and i feel like night tales you kind of have to be <clears throat> somewhere around the front to make it make sense so um that wasn't the best but in terms of djing in terms of what they were actually doing um there's no denying that you know roy perez naps and part took absolutely tore it to pieces i've got a little clip compilation here that i put together uploaded on my um channel i'm going to quickly play to kind of give you an idea on what the vibes were saying inside and you get an idea on kind of that you know the kind of scale and this you know the size of the space but for the most part i'd say it was probably you know maybe with the two rooms included it might be a thousand capacity but it was a pretty small space but again with it being under you know train or bridge or railway arches it kind of felt a bit cold kind of felt a bit empty it lacked a bit of warmth in there the sound wasn't the greatest really and truly but for what it was i thought they did a pretty good job and again origins i always trust them because they just put on they, they just know who to book and what combos to kind of put people together with and for the most part i don't think i've ever seen a bad lineup from them so it's not really their fault it's most of the space i wasn't really the biggest fan of but you know i might have to get used to it because oranges do do a few of their nights at flipping night tales so it might be something to kind of get used to but it's just the start of um of, of my experience and i think i arrived at what I think I arrived just before, just after 12, I think, and the night only ended at 3, so it wasn't the longest night ever, but this is kind of a clip to kind of show you what was going on in there. <laughs> One thing that was cool though because it's hackney central and because it's where it was origins i felt like that venue is kind of like it's a, i won't say it's commercial but it's like you know it usually books a lot of kind of normie ish type of djs and i did think it was quite nice to see the kind of contrast between having a very gay queer crowd who came out to see roy perez and partook and obviously a more traditional or normal crowd that would go to a place like uh, night tales for instance I, I did like that kind of blend in between and it did feel like the age ranges were a little bit more dive it was a little bit more varied it wasn't kind of the usual hipsters and whatnot in there there was a really strange couple that i met or what well, i met that was behind outside um who were you know i guess flirting and on some weird date overheard the guy basically you know being so giddy and happy that that girl was now single and that they met each other again and the girl seemed to be somewhat happy but she just wanted to have some sort of a night out and that was interesting i was thinking like imagine going on a date like people i don't know maybe it's a psychotic to is, I, I think it's some it's a level of psychosis to take a girl on a date and go to a nightclub especially for like a first date or something it seems a little bit excessive and it? it's a bit much to go to a flipping nightclub and if, if anything and maybe a, a gig would make sense um maybe just a nice cocktail bar that has some good music but to go to an actual nightclub as a first gig is a bit much but you know big up that guy hopefully he was successful but he was wrapping in on there so it was quite cool to see that contrast i quite like that there's a lot of you know random gay dudes on the dance floor you know sucking each other's faces off and loads of guys and you know trendy looking dudes like solomon's and bucket hats and shit which i quite like that contrast i thought that was quite cool to see My, my 
my favorite song was this clip over here. There's a clip around here. I don't know what this song is, but there was this tune that I absolutely loved that I kind of recorded on here. I'm going to quickly scan across. Where is it? I think it was just after this, this bit here. This song I flipping love. I don't know what this song is, but this, this is what got me going. I was going crazy when this played. <laughs> I don't think the crowd was going crazy enough, man. People were talking on the dance floor, you know, pontificating about politics, talking about other nonsense. I don't think people were going crazy enough for what this beat was. I don't know who the hell produces, who made this, but this sounds insanely good. <laughs> Um, I, I, had, I had a blast. It was pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. Um, would I go back to Night Tales? It'll take me a lot to go back, to be honest. Um, obviously, Origins put on a decent night anyway, and I trust them for programming. They always know to book the right people, and they always have great lineups in general. So if they put on a decent night, I'd probably go. But it's not my favorite club in London, I've got to be honest. First time there, you know. And I wasn't that impressed. Bit cold, a little bit drab, um, weird, good and weird crowd. The sound wasn't the greatest. It kind of felt a bit cold, um, lacking in any kind of real personality. And, you know, with it ending at 3 a.m. as well, it's a little bit of a, it feels like a little bit of a robbery. You know, you have to go there really early. You have to go there around 10 because I got this ticket. That was like a free ticket. They sent an email blast around. Maybe they didn't sell enough tickets. I don't know what it was, but they sent an email blast around saying, hey, you can get a free ticket. But the free ticket was only before 10 p.m. You had to get there before 10, which is insane. I didn't even know that. So I got there late of his course and then I had to pay another tenner to get in with that ticket. So, you know, it, you know, whatever it may be. So um, ticket price wasn't that crazy, but I still think to, you know, for a club to go to a club at 10 p.m. till 3 a.m. is a little bit tight. And because it's in Hackey Central, it's kind of far from everything. It will take you a while to get back to flipping East or my East to go to Fold, which goes at six. And I think usually last entry is at four something or whatever, maybe. So that's a bit of a mission. So you're kind of stranded and you kind of have to, it's one of those weird venues where, or locations where you have to decide whether or not you want to stay there until free or you want to leave before free to go somewhere else and bounce because there's no time if you'd say that until free to go from there to fold and stuff other places so it's a little bit of a risk risky move to go there but overall I had a decent time not the greatest club in the world but i thought the programming was really good and i was really enjoyed um roy Pires and partock playing that was definitely one of my um the highlights could definitely go and check out <laughs>